I'm walking along the Wellington Fault, one of the many, many active faults throughout New Zealand. The difference in level here shows how much movement there's been in about the last 10,000 years along this particular fault. Why is that so? Why are there so many earthquakes throughout New Zealand? We need to stand back and take a look at the really big picture. Here we are, New Zealand, where two tectonic plates collide. In the south, we have a trench. A trench means that one side, in this case the Australian plate, is going down beneath the Pacific plate, down to about 200 kilometres deep. And along that plate boundary, there are many earthquakes. In the central South Island, the plate collision is mostly taken up by movement across what we call the Alpine Fault. So much of the earthquake activity on the Alpine Fault is sideways movement as well as a little bit of upwards movement. The upward movement is the thing that causes the very, very strong boundary between Westland and the high peaks of the Southern Alps. Away from the Alpine Fault, which is the main fault of the plate boundary, there are many smaller faults, such as those that generated the devastating earthquakes in Canterbury. As we go further to the north, the Alpine Fault breaks up into a series of faults, and these are known as the Marlborough Fault System. Most of the movement transitions across onto the Hope Fault and heads out towards this plate boundary that's to the north. The North Island situation is more or less the opposite of what's occurring in Fiordland. In the big picture, the Pacific Plate is now going down underneath the North Island, which is still part of this great big Australian plate, and it dives down to five and six hundred kilometres deep. As well as the master fault that we might call as the subduction fault, the North Island's broken up into many smaller parts. So the earthquake activity is quite varied in the North Island. We have the possibility of really big earthquakes on the plate interface, on the subduction zone in East Coast North Island, and that could be similar to big earthquakes that have occurred in Japan or in Indonesia. Smaller earthquakes, but maybe closer to the cities, like the Napier earthquake in 1931. And then when we get into the volcanic zone, that's where the land is pulling apart, and we see a different sort of fault again, and earthquakes are generally smaller on these faults. The Edgecombe earthquake of 1987 is a really typical example of earthquakes that we expect to be associated with the, the volcanic zone. So that's the story of why we get big shakes in New Zealand. Living in an earthquake prone country, you've got to always be prepared, no matter how high the risk might or might not appear to be. Remember, if the earth starts shaking, immediately drop, cover and hold.